How's it going, everybody? Got some good news. It looks like a couple of key Yankees are beginning to heat up. Juan Soto reached base five times in Wednesday night's game, and Aaron Judge got the big hit in the ninth inning to put the Yankees out front, and they won the game. So let's check in on how the Rays are reacting to knowing that they got to face the Yankees with these two guys heating up, heading back into Yankee Stadium. Uh-oh. Um, it was nice to see Judge, you know, come through in the clutch. And, and that's the key word, you know. I don't, I, I don't care if he's hitting 180 or 200, but if he can come through in the clutch and we need him, and he's worth every dime we have to pay for him as far as I'm concerned. Um, pitching is another thing. Our bullpen is weak. I think um, this guy, uh, Ferguson, we brought him out twice. He's given up a run each time. Um, you know, we're not even into the dog days of July and August yet. So uh, you know, I just I just think we are we're gonna we're lacking pitching. Uh, we have three starters that we don't know when they take them out if they're even going to make it to the fifth. Uh, and at some point, we have to we have to rectify that. You know, in general, I feel like the pitching depth in Major League Baseball is getting really thin. A lot of guys getting injured. There's a lot of you know like quadruple A type of pitchers kind of floating around the league right now, filling in for guys. And I feel like every team is struggling with pitching. So it's not just the Yankees. I kind of agree with you on Caleb Ferguson. To me, the guy just hasn't shown me very much. Too many pitches right down the middle. I mean, come on. Hit the corners once in a while. But he's, he's just throwing too many meatballs. And, uh, yeah, Aaron Judge came up big the other night. I still think that uh, he's worth every penny, even if he fails in the clutch once in a while, because in the aggregate, he's going to put together huge numbers over the course of a season. He's just in a slump. He said to Susan Waldman the other day that he wishes the slump was in the middle of the season so that nobody would notice it. The problem is when you begin a season slow, it just drags down your numbers and it makes your numbers look really bad. You're coming to the plate with like a 200 batting average or a 190 batting average, and it, it just doesn't look sexy on the screen. But I think he's going to have a big, big May, a big, big June. Like, as the weather begins to heat up and the ball starts to fly, Aaron Judge is going to take off. And when that happens, it's going to be absolutely absurd. But we are seeing a lot of good things with the team. We're seeing Anthony Volpe on the screen right now. Just saw Juan Soto. The team's looking really good. Uh, we've just got to be patient with our big guy. It's a perfect timing for the Sterling Tribute this weekend on Saturday. Um, I wanted to make a quick observation. So there was a game, I tried to look for it, that um, Rizzo took a dive and made a defensive play, and it seems like every ever since that happened, he has regressed defensively and hitting-wise. I was trying to find it, but I couldn't. So is it possible that that dive has made him have his concussive symptoms of again? So I don't know. I just don't see somebody regressing that badly in defense. I went back and looked at some of Anthony Rizzo's stat cast metrics for the last several years. Now, he's mostly been an above average first baseman, but in 2022, his fielding run value was in the 38th percentile, which is not good. It's well below average. Last year, despite the concussion, it was in the 81st percentile, so a nice step forward. This year, it's in the 27th percentile, so basically the bottom quarter of the league. We know how important it is to have a first baseman who can pick it. You remember a couple years ago we had guys like Jay Bruce, we had Mike Ford, we had just a bunch of people over there that couldn't pick it, and how many times did it cost us runs? You know, there would be maybe an inning-ending ground ball, a guy throws one in the dirt, and the first baseman can't come up with it, and it makes the pitcher throw more pitches, they're out of the game quicker, it drags the inning on, it maybe leads to some runs. So we need Rizzo to be excellent defensively. Uh, we don't have a lot of strength in this uh, defense right now with LeMahieu out and Torres continuing to struggle. Now, Anthony Volpe has been really good at shortstop, but even he occasionally throws balls in the dirt, and we need our first baseman to pick those. So it's something worth watching. I'm not super concerned yet because I still think there might be like a luck factor, but uh, it's something worth watching. So appreciate the call. Hey, Derek. This is Remington from Manhattan. Just wanted to <clears throat> talk about Mr. Judge. Ever since he hit that wall in uh, L.A., he's not been the same. 
and it's all physical. It has nothing to do with the, with the, with the mental part of his game. It's all, it all began with the foot. It's going to continue with the foot. And now it's a, a, a bad ob- oblique, which will result in a poor, 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 poor performances. Hey, I appreciate the call. I'm going to disagree a little bit on Aaron Judge, though. Push back just a tiny bit. He went out last year on June 3rd and came back July 28th. So he missed, you know, over a month, almost two months. But after he came back, he had 18 home runs in 192 at bats. I mean, that's like a 60 home run season. He he maintained an incredible pace. He had two three home run games after the toe injury last year, once against the Nationals in August and once against the Diamondbacks in September. So the power is still there. He didn't have an injury with his oblique. They did an MRI, and it was his abdominal that he he was feeling discomfort with from a, a winter of hitting. I think it's more of a timing issue than anything. I think he just did not get the requisite amount of reps in spring training, and so he's kind of behind the eight ball. But we're seeing him you know, connect. He had a 450-foot home run the other day in Cleveland, and then he had the walk-off. Well, it wasn't a walk-off, but the go-ahead hit in the ninth inning to win the game. Uh I still think Aaron Judge is going to be fine. I just think we all need to be a little bit more patient. Hopefully that hit the other night got him going. Just the two things I'm kind of worried about here, and I wanted to get your take on. A, do you think this team without Garrett Cole has a a stopper? Uh, You know, like, for instance, today when we were three losses in – in a row, do we have that guy that we can look to, like Garrett Cole, obviously, but if he's not here, I I don't know who's going to be that stopper. That's the one thing I wanted to get your input on that. And the second was uh, just this this defense that we've all been seeing this year. Do you think that this is going to haunt us later on in the season? Uh, For your first point about us not having a stopper, I agree. We don't have a stopper right now. You can't replace a Garrett Cole. I mean, he's just so good. Nobody's going to be able to step in and fill those shoes. I feel like we have a a bunch of number twos and threes. I feel like uh, Stroman has pitched like a number two so far. I think he's done really, really well. I feel like Rodone is pitching like a number three at this point, as is Nestor Cortez, maybe a three or four. And Luis Hill and Clark Schmidt, are pitching like, you know, number four, number five types where they can have a great game but also have uh, a tough game. Luis Hill, I think, has ace-level stuff. He just doesn't harness his command the way he needs to. You know, if he could step up, and it's not going to happen overnight, uh, he really could be a dominant starter for this team. But, again, that's that's more further down the line. But, yeah, I agree with you. Team uh, needs a stopper. Hopefully Garrett Cole gets back in June and and can be healthy. But again, he might be behind the eight ball just like Aaron Judge is and just like Carlos Rodon was last year. Also, worth noting that the defense is already costing us. It's already making guys throw more pitches and, and have deeper counts and things like that. They've got to tighten up the defense ASAP. Appreciate the call. Rolando from the Bronx. Hey, Derek. Uh, love the way you're doing your channel and more recaps. Big, big supporter. Huge win for the Yankees comeback. Uh, hope this give a momentum swing and brings a judge his swing back and everything. So looking forward for this homestand and looking forward to what they can do before they go to Milwaukee Brewers. Let's go, Yanks. Let's go, NY Caps. Appreciate the call. Appreciate the support. I think the Yankees have a good chance to put a hurting on the Rays this weekend if they can get past their starting pitching. The Rays have the worst bullpen in baseball right now. They've been awful, awful. And the Yankees' offense really wears down pitchers usually. They didn't do it so much against the Blue Jays, but they're great at taking pitches, working counts. I think if they can get some of these Rays pitchers out of the game by, like, the fourth inning, they have a chance to do some serious damage against the bullpen. Rodon, I think he is going to be fine. I think once the weather warms up, he loosens up. He's going to be fine. He's got a tight body. It's muscular, and he's tight. As he warms up and loosens up, that ball is going to fly out of his hand. I hope you're right. I mean, he's been throwing 98. I don't know how much harder he can throw. The issue is he hasn't been able to put guys away. And it's not so much, I think, that he's not loose. 
I think that he needs another pitch. I think he needs a pitch that can wipe guys out and pick up a strikeout because right now they're just fouling off foul ball after foul ball after foul ball, no matter how hard he's throwing. He either needs to use his change up more, which we saw two starts ago, or he needs to throw that that curveball that we saw a little bit last start, or you know get a little bit more bite on the cutter. But I think he needs a swing and miss pitch because right now he does not have one. Clay Holmes has been electric as a closer this year. You've got to give him his due. He's been really solid. The velo on the sinker is up at 98 lately. He's looking good. Hamilton has been solid. But aside from that, we definitely have some holes in the bullpen, and we've seen the starters walking guys going short in games like Rodone, Schmidt, Nestor. It's already packed the bullpen just here into mid-April. And uh, we might have to look internally or look to make a trade as the months go on. Appreciate the call. Clay Holmes' stuff is electric, but the high wire act is uh, a little tough sometimes on my blood pressure. Ian Hamilton, I agree, been terrific, but the rest of the bullpen has been pretty thin. It stinks that Ron Marinaccio has regressed the way he has. I do think there's some arms that could make an impact. I mean, Clayton Beater, he obviously came in and, and pitched one inning this year, but I think he translates really well to the bullpen. Maybe when Garrett Cole comes back, you know, one of these guys who's in the rotation right now, whether it's uh, Luis Heal, who has a 100-mile-an-hour fastball, or whether it's Clark Schmidt, transitions to the bullpen. Clark Schmidt has had trouble getting past five innings in his major league career. This is the second year in a row that it's been a real issue for him. Would not shock me if he goes to the bullpen because he can pitch you three innings and be very effective and fill that kind of Mike King role, but I just don't trust him to go deep into the game as a starter. But I appreciate it. I appreciate all the calls. We got uh, Yankees versus the Rays coming tonight. Uh, Three-game set, and I'll be live after each game with the post-game show. We got Max Goodman coming on this weekend. We got Terrence coming on on Sunday. So a lot of great content coming. Keep those voicemails coming. I'll see you next time. Oh!